Hey everyone again, so I'm going to continue with explaining the Feynman diagrams um, for some interactions. So this is where I left part one in the video. So Feynman diagrams for neutron neutrino, so the beta decay, which is this first one, and the proton antineutrino beta plus decay or positron decay interaction. And uh, that's the second diagram. In terms of Feynman language, as I like to say, the first one, the beta decay, is a neutron-neutrino interaction because I have a neutron that interacts with a neutrino in here and makes the neutron to go into a proton and then when this happens I get a beta particle being given out, okay? And um, the reason why I get this happening or the, uh, the exchange particle is the weak boson, so that's the W in here I have a beta decay, I get a, a negative boson, okay, so it has a negative charge. Uh, and the formula for this interaction is showing he in here. Um, I have a, a video that explains this a little bit better. I'm just going to um, go through something else that comes after, okay? So I'm saying this really quickly, but go on the previous video, part one, to get all of these things with more detail. Then on the other side, I had a proton antineutrino interaction. So again, I have a nucleus that is rich in protons and interacts with an antineutrino. And then it gives me, uh, the proton becomes a neutron. So here we go, the neutron. It gives me a, a positron. So here we go, beta plus. This happens because of the weak interaction again. The exchange particle is the W boson, is a positive one. It gives me a positron, okay? And when I have this, I get a neutrino, okay? So we need to know these equations well because in this case, the Feynman diagrams are about the interactions. They want to know the interactions. However, I can also have this, uh, different Feynman diagrams for the same type of equation. So for the same equation, I can get this Feynman diagram that says what meets mat what, sorry, what meets what and gives what. And I can have, and here we go, next slide. Oh, sorry, this is just showing that the um, charge is conserved. So, you know, we know that the, the Feynman diagrams are correct or that the interactions can occur if the charge is conserved, okay? Now, they can ask me for the same equation. So look here, that's the same equations for the beta decay, same equation for the positron decay or positron emission. For the same ones, I can have different Feynman diagrams, okay? So let's just think what is different and how do I know which type of diagram I should do, okay? So first of all, let's look at the previous slide. I had two arrows going in, I had two arrows going out, right? In the two types of interactions. In this one, they're asking me for the decay and I have one arrow going in and then three arrows coming out. So in the second one, when they ask you for the decay, what they want is really to see what was given out in the, de the decay. So not what caused it, like in this slide, is caused by a neutrino, it's caused by an antineutrino, but instead they want to know actually what happened, so what is the decay. So you start saying that you started with a neutron, you get a proton, you get a beta particle, here we go, beta particle, and you get an antineutrino, here we go, the antineutrino. It's the same process, so the boson that is responsible is still the same one as before, so it's the W minus, okay? So the W, is, uh, w minus boson is a decay uh, into a beta minus particle, okay, an electron, and a and this symbol is for an antineutrino particle. Then let's go on the positron decay. So in this case I have a um, nucleus that is rich in protons and because I have an antineutrino I'm going to get the proton becoming a neutron. Here we go. And then when this happens I get a beta plus particle, so positron. And then I get as well um, a neutrino. So here we go. I have a neutrino coming out of it as well. Okay again is the same process as the one in the previous slide so I still have the W boson and it's still a positive one the only difference is really is that previous slide so let me go there again of the Feynman diagrams they're asking me for the interactions so they actually want to know what was the reason why the neutron becomes a proton 
or why the proton becomes the neutron, depending if you're talking about the beta decay or the positron decay, okay? Um, and then they want to know what was given out. All right, fine. And then in these new ones, they will want to know the decay, so they do not care about what cause, so they kind of don't care about this leg in here. What they want to know is what started and then what I got from it. So neutron goes into a proton. Look here, I have an atomic number that increases by one. So neutron going into a proton. Then I get a beta particle. Here we go, look in the equation, a beta particle. And then I get an antineutrino. Again, look at the equation, it gives me the antineutrino. Let's look at the positron emission in here, okay? I have a proton that becomes a neutron, okay? So that means that the atomic number decreases because I lost a proton. So proton to neutron, that's explained in here. And then I get a positron being given out. Here we go, positron, positron, sorry, being given out. And then I have a neutrino. Here we go, I have a neutrino. So while the first, and I'm sorry, I will be going back and forth in the slides. While the first Feynman diagrams we look at were the actual interactions, so what made this all happening, the second one, this one of the decays, I'm basically showing these equations, okay? Because these are the equations of the decays. So here I am showing the Feynman diagram representation of the equations of the decay, the beta decay or the positron okay and that's the Feynman diagram the representation of the decay the first one I'm talking about the interactions so I'm saying what happened in the nucleus that made the decay to happen so they are different processes and therefore the Feynman diagrams are different again here I have in the beta decay which is the neutron neutrino interaction I have a neutrino that interacts with a neutron, makes it become a proton. I am given a beta particle and this happens, okay? In the second one, the proton antineutrino interaction, then I have the antineutrino that um, interacts with a proton, is a nucleus that is rich in protons. The proton becomes a neutron, here we go, and I get a beta plus a positron being emitted, okay? The only difference is that these interactions, so this is showing what made the first part of the air reaction happening or the decay happening, and it doesn't necessarily show the rest of the decay, while the second diagrams, they are only about the decays. So when you're doing these diagrams, if they ask you about the decays, you show where it started in all the products, okay? So you basically represent the formula into the diagram, okay? So the two formulas here represented in the diagrams. If instead they don't ask you about decay, but they ask about the interactions, then you need to show what made the interaction to happen in the first place. So what made this formula to become real or to become alive, okay? To go to actual, this thing to actually happen. So that's on the Feynman diagrams, and I explained this fully, as I told you, in the first part. That's the decay. Now, again, we can check if this all works. So here we go. Let's check again if we have the conservation of charge, because this is, again, that thing that tells me if the interaction can happen or not. So in the beginning, I have zero charge, because the neutrino has zero charge. And then at the end, after the interaction, I have proton, positive, beta or your electron negative and antineutrino so positive minus and zero overall this is zero plus zero so i have zero in the beginning zero at the end so this can happen okay is possible next one let's let's look at the positron emission proton in the beginning so positive charge at the start and then i get neutron and then I get a positron, positive, and then I get a, ne a neutrino, so zero charge. So zero, zero, plus. So I have positive charge at the end, after the interaction, positive in the beginning. The charge is conserved, okay? It doesn't need to be zero in the beginning and in the end to be conserved. It just only needs to be the same charge. So positive and positive is conserved. Therefore, our diagrams are correct. Therefore, this interaction can happen, okay? One more thing that I'll tell you is about electron capture. So this is another Feynman diagram uh, that you can meet, okay? 
So sometimes you have a proton in a proton-rich nucleus that turns into a neutron, not because you had, um, in this case, the new, the antineutrino, sorry, but because you had, uh, where is it? Uh, because you had one of the neutrons um, interacting through the weak interaction uh, with an inner shell electron from the outside of the nucleus. So sometimes you can have a proton going into a neutron, um, but due to another reason, okay? So when that happens, this is the Feynman diagram, proton comes into neutron, you are being given a neutrino, and you get the W plus boson, okay? And I'll tell you why this electron is showing in here, okay? Uh, it's because the same can happen as well when you have a proton and an electron colliding at a very high speed. So this is what makes the other, uh, this Feynman diagram um, to, be, uh, to be here as well, to be, so you can use it, sorry, I'm a little bit ill and I'm making this video, I shouldn't be making this video. So again, <laughs> um, proton goes into neutron because the proton interacted with the electron gave me the neutron okay and then I got a neutrino that's all that I wanted to say um, so if I said something something weird do apologize um, and yep that's it for the second part of the interactions and I hope it makes sense but if it doesn't make sense at all uh, just drop me a message and then I'll try to make it a little bit better and see you take care let me just oh, stop the recording bye